I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Samantha once again. We're about to another video. There's another paid request, this time for Joseph. And in the last couple of videos, if you hear background noise, it's the neighborhood just wanting to be what it wants to be. Whether it be roosters, whether it be pounding, whether it be fixing, up and dupping, all around quadrupling, whatever the hell they're doing. They ain't my business, they ain't my problem, they ain't my spiel. But my spiel is. This request for Joseph, thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos or commentaries, topics, reactions, re-reviews, reviews, whatever, feel free to send them either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for a film called Perfect Target, which, when I saw the cover, I've seen, not the movie, but I've seen the cover before. I think Mike OCP had this on a DVD update. I don't remember which one. I remember seeing the cover, and for a split second, I thought the guy on the cover was Humphrey Bogart. I have no idea why the hell I thought that. But no, it's Daniel Bernhardt, who looks nothing like Humphrey Bogart, so I don't know what the hell. But I thought for a split second, and obviously it's not. 1997 action film directed by Sheldon Ledditch. If that name sounds familiar, he directed John claude Van Damme films like Lionheart and Double Impact. He wrote Ramble 3, he helped Van Damme work on some of the behind the scenes editing and such on Bloodsport. He would direct Van Damme and direct the video film The Order, which is one of Van Damme's better direct video films. I think my neighbor's roosters, they agreed, yeah, you know, I like The Order. It's a pretty fun movie for what it is. Yeah, it's low budget, but if you go into Van Damme for wanting to see Van Damme have fun, have a smile on his face... And it has some pretty decent action sequences for a directed video film. The Order is a fun time. This one, like I said, you, you got Daniel Bernhardt. Daniel Bernhardt always came off to me as a wannabe John Law Van Damme. Not that he's bad. There's been films of his I enjoyed. I believe he did one called True Vengeance, which I reviewed. I think that was one I reviewed not too long ago. He did the, the Blood Sports sequels. He worked on some of the, the Matrix films later on. He worked with Keanu Reeves on John Wick. At least the first John Wick. He's been in some bigger movies. He did fight Van Damme in a film called Kill em All. Which wasn't that good of a movie, Sally. And even this film's better than that one. Which is sad. Because at least this, while the action is average. It's 90's average. People are like, what the hell does that mean? 90's average means... At least the camera holds still. At least it's not cutting every five milliseconds. At least the camera is is not doing this. At least it's doing what it should naturally do. It's just it doesn't have a lot of action. You have like a bar fight at the beginning. You have an assassination that happens. You have a, some training, a good chunk of training in the middle. And then you have some action at the end. But there's, it's nothing that you're going to run home about and go, wow. 
I was so shocked and surprised, but no, it's, there's a lot of even directed video films, whether it be Deli Outbury with Jeff Speakman, whether it be some PM Entertainment films, like Last Man Standing with Jeff Wincott, whether it be No Retreat, No Surrender 2 with Lord Avedon, whether it be Dolph Lundgren films like, let's see, uh, what was the, tip of my tongue, Command Performance. There's a lot of films that have, this is not Sheldon Lettish's best hour. It's not a worse hour either. I would probably say the hardcore with Van Damme. I would say that's the worst film Sheldon, Sheldon Ledge has directed. Did he do the Dolph Lundgren film The Last Warrior? If so, actually I would say that was his worst film. If, if that was Sheldon Ledge. Which is sad because, you know, love Dolph Lundgren. Sheldon Ledge has been a capable director. I mean, anyone who does Lionheart and Double Impact, pretty capable in my book. I didn't. He'll write Ramble 3. So, he has talent. This one, like I said, is a middle-of-the-road movie. The, ironically enough, with what my neighbors, if the movie begins with a cockfight. Now, I don't know if I really need to see an actual cockfight, so it's actual, them sniping at each other. Chickens, roosters, however you want to put it. I'm not sure if I really needed to see that to open up your action movie. And it's not like I'm this big animal activist. I mean, I eat chicken. I love chicken. I love chicken sandwiches. I love Popeyes. Doesn't mean I want to see them actually fight and kick the shit out of each other in a movie. I don't know, just, I can't help it. Daniel Bernhardt, he just wants to relax. It takes place in South America. And they won't leave him the fuck alone. He's like, okay, fine. You don't want me here? I'll get the fuck out of Dodge. No, you will not, gringo. Okay, you have a decent bar fight. And there are times where it really does feel like he w trying to be Van Damme. Maybe Sheldon Ledditch is like, hey, could you be like Van Damme? Van Damme in 97, he was doing, what, Double Team? That was around the time of Double Team, stuff for like that. So, it's like, well, okay, I'll get Daniel Bernhardt for this. But can you try to be Van There are times where he feels like he looks like trying to be Van Damme. And the idea, he's not bad. He's not the worst actor star. I've seen much, much worse. He's fine for what he needed to do. But after the little bar fight, he gets put in jail. And Brian Thompson, yes, from Sylvester Stallone's Cobra, who played the, the Night Slasher. He's been a lot of other stuff. He was one of the punks at the beginning of The Terminator with Bill Paxton, who Arnold fucks up nothing clean right nothing clean right Brian Thompson gets fucked up there he was with Van Damme in The Order he was in More Combat Annihilation he's been in a few others uh, I think this is one of his better roles I mean he's much better than his role in More Combat Annihilation this will be glorious whatever the fuck he was saying he's like hey I got you a job you can get out of jail come work for me and Brian Thompson's working with Robert England. Yes, the Robert England. Freddy fucking Krueger himself. It was interesting to see Robert England play a different type of role where it's not just Freddy Krueger, although he's great at it. Uh, other roles I've seen him in, it was like Ford Fairlane. He played really off-the-wall type of villain. This is more like a straightforward villain. Sadly, he's not the main villain, which is a shame. I mean, you got Robert England. I don't know why you would not make him the main villain. And even Brian Thompson isn't really the main villain. It's the president's wife, who's the supreme bitch. But it's cool to see Brian Thompson and Robert England there. They're doing what they can with the material. They're having a bit of fun with the material. Like Brian Thompson's fucked with the the evil bitch lady. And Robert England's kind of giving Brian Thompson shit for it. And when they're yelling at them, she leaves. And under his breath, Robert England says, bitch. And Brian Thompson goes, that's senor, that's a senorita presidente bitch. Like, they're trying for what they, they have to do. Now, I know it's like 10 minutes in, I haven't gotten to the plot, because the plot's pretty simple and basic. These two hired Daniel Bernhardt 
to lead this group of mercenaries to protect this president of this little part of South America. Little spot, middle of nowhere in South America. But then, of course, things fucked over another person, another individual. Daniel Bernard set up. And him and this other guy make a run for it. While the president gets shot and killed and... Brian Thompson, Robert England crew turn on Daniel Bernhardt. Daniel Bernhardt's the patsy. Him and this guy run off to the jungle. And the guy's like, I know someone. Takes him to see his sister, who she is the leader of these rebels. And Daniel Bernhardt's like, I don't want to train people because they're tired of people getting killed. But ultimately falls in love with the girl. Ultimately does train people. And you know, as I'm watching this, I'm like, this reminds me plenty of movies have done that but the movie kept reminding me that i thought did it much better was a film called 50 50. this is a film that needs a blu-ray it stars peter will and robert hayes and it's about two guys who are paid in this essence to train this group of people and so and peter weller kind of falls for one of the female rebel higher ups. In that movie, though, they're told to abandon. They're like, fuck that. We're not abandoning these people. We gotta do something right for a change. And no, it's not the exact same plot, but when it's going through these training bits, it reminded me of 50 50. I'm like, I'd rather watch 50 50. If you haven't seen the film, it's one of the last uh, canon films. And uh, it's a fun movie. It's a very fun, entertaining, funny movie. And Robert Hayes, Peter Weller play off each other well. Again, I wish it had a Blu-ray. Deserves it. The underrated flick. And so that's one of the issues I have with the film. Is that the middle portion is rather slow. It's rather uneventful. It's training them. Train them some more. Fall in love with the girl. The brother gets a bit pissed at that. They're ready to fight. Meanwhile, their camp's attacked. The girl's taken. So Daniel Bernhardt, the girl's brother, and other rebels have to go battle. And uh, before, there's also a point where they do a battle. And it's sort of a setup for the final countdown. They do go in. They do fight. And... The reason I'm being very vague, it's fairly forgettable when that one battle portion happens. Because you think, you know, yeah, Daniel Bernhardt, he's a martial artist. He's going to go away, he's going to have showcases, martial arts, kicks, punches, you know, papa, you know, something either stylistic or something fun, over the top, memorable. Not really. It's just these people firing on these people. Explosion here, explosion there. Uh, at the end, the lady steals a truck. Daniel Bernard gets on the back, has like a little machine gun. Kind of does this, and then you see people fall. You don't even see a lot of like blood squibs. I mean, it's not like the last stand with Arnold when he had that machine gun. It's like... It is yeah, like average at best. I mean, I said all the other stuff I mentioned happens in the, the, the finale. Where Daniel Bernhardt, the brother, and the rebels attack. Daniel Bernhardt doesn't even deal with Robert England much. It's the other guy who deals with Robert England. Daniel Bernhardt has a all right fight with Brian Thompson. Like all right at best. David Michael Frank does the score. He did the music for Shodello Tokyo. A lot of the early Steven Seagal films like Above the Law and Out for Justice and I think March for Death. He did the score for Code of Silence. Very competent composer. I would say this is one of his weaker scores. Weaker musical scores. At least compared to those like Out for Justice and Show Little Tokyo. Definitely one of his weaker ones. And this is like one of those movies that I'm watching it. I'm not getting mad about it, but it's just you've seen this many times before. You've seen it done better. 
And there's really nothing that memorable to make it oh you gotta see this. And again, even if you're a big fan of action, the middle portion being rather slow and uneventful, again, it's just Daniel Bernhardt with the Rebels, training them, hanging out with them, once in a while it cuts to the bad guys talking. There's not a whole lot to that. And like I said, Robert England, Brian Thompson, they're fine. Like I said, I don't know why you had to have this president lady be the main bad guy. She's the last one to be dealt with. I'm like, why? Direction-wise, it's average at best. There's really nothing direction-wise. Like, yeah, average. Capable. But nothing of rather noteworthy... To, to talk about. I guess if you're a hardcore Daniel Bernhardt fan. And you need to see every action film that comes out in the 90s. I mean he went direct to video. It doesn't have the biggest budget. As a Robert England I thought was rather wasted. I mean, it's fun to see him. But it's like. I wish he had a bit more to do. I mean spoiler alert. Spoilers at the end. I guess he's not even fighting Daniel Bernhardt. He's fighting the other guy. And. He fires a gun a little bit. He gets headbutted. Robert Englund tries to fight and pretty much just thrown out the window. <laughs> well, he thrown out the window. He's hanging on. The guy like punches him a few times. Then he falls to his death. And like Daniel Bernard, you think, okay, you don't go into this mansion, this place, this uh, TV station, wherever it is. Okay, let's see. Daniel Bernard really showcases martial arts. He doesn't do a whole lot of that. It's like they do it at the bar scene at the beginning. A little bit of Brian Thompson. And Brian Thompson is not. He's not known as a big like martial arts guy. So. It's like Daniel Burr blocking a few punches. And doing a few kicks here and there. Getting in the sleep will hold. And then the rebel lady shoots him. And kills Brian Thompson. So Daniel Burr doesn't even do that. Uh, I said this is spoilers, so more spoilers. Then the evil president, ex-president's wife's bitch shoots her, and the rebel lady dies. And yes, he even had Daniel Burrow go, no! Which you didn't need that. You could just have him go, no! You know, quick. Not the long drawn out, and with the hand out, no! It just, that comes off as silly, comes off as ridiculous. That's something that you know, people make fun of. When that kind of stuff happens. No. Yeah. And then the, the public realized that this lady's an evil bitch. So Daniel Burhardt throws her to the crowd. And they take care of her off screen. And pretty much the movie's over. So like you said the, the score by David Michael Frank. I expected a bit more. Based on his past work. Sheldon Lettich. I mean, you look at, again, Lionheart, Double Empath. Maybe they had bigger budgets, and that's why. To be fair, those are theatrical films, so they, they had more of a budget. Thus, you could create more action. Van Damme definitely utilized more of his martial arts compared to Daniel Bernhardt, who used, like, a little bit. But even, like, the, the True Avengers, the one Daniel Bernhardt, that had a lot more action. That had a lot more of a better pace to it. I believe it's called True Vengeance. Sorry if I'm wrong. This didn't really average. Like average is the best way to describe it. Like I said, if you need to watch every, it's for free on YouTube. If you're a diehard Brian Thompson, Robert England fan, they're in it for if 15 minutes total combined. If you again, if I guess if you're a diehard '90s directed video fan or if you're a diehard Daniel Bernhardt fan, it's definitely one of the weaker, more forgettable Sheldon Lettich films. Not his worst, but it's definitely not one of his best either. So, with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye bye.